Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about using grids when making cards. Grid style cards are the type of cards that have a lot of geometry to them. You have multiple elements on a card like this where the placement of said element is defined by a grid. It is a very easy and fun type of card to make and one that works best when using smaller size elements. If we're talking about A2 cards, so the four and a quarter by five and a half inch cards, I would say that the size of the element should be less than two by two and a half inches. So a quarter of the card and smaller. When you have a smaller die cut or a smaller stamped image, the grid helps to house that element on your card without it looking weird or out of place. Grid helps to divide the card background into smaller sections that are easier to work with and easier to fill. If I can compare this to a blank page, blank page usually feels rather intimidating because of all of that white or blank space. But as you scale the page down, as you make it smaller, it becomes less and less intimidating and makes it easier to work with. The same applies to grid style cards. When you have a grid, it is easier to fill in the space of each section. I made some visuals for this video and divided card fronts into sections using yellow tape. I have several grid options here, 2x3, 3x3, and 3x3 placed diagonally. The tape divides the card fronts into sections and you fill in each section using an element of your choice. You can use all identical elements in each section of the grid, so repeat the same element. You can have several different elements and vary them between sections, repeating them throughout the card. Or you can have a unique element for each grid section. I love to use these grid designs whenever I have a die set or a stamp set with a smaller image. Now, these are some examples of the grid cards from my blog. John Bardee is a card maker I admire greatly, and she has numerous amazing grid style cards. I have a link to her Instagram profile in my video description below. Be sure to check her out for more amazing grid style card ideas. The grid style cards I have for you today are all made using die cuts from Spellbinders. These come from various releases, and I have all of the products that I'm using listed and linked in the video description below. The dies you see on the screen are from the special pet delivery die set, allowing you to create adorable cats and dogs with a cute little paws that can hold a small object. The die set is designed so that the critter is holding a banner, but you can replace that banner with many other things. It can be a gift, it can be an ornament, it can be a candy cane or anything else that makes sense size-wise. This die set is highly customizable and you can create the pads to match your pads or the pads of your friends by cutting them out of various colors of cardstock. You can also cut them just from white paper and color that paper using Copic markers, for example. I did all of my die cutting from colored cardstock. Now, this is the die set that takes or requires a lot of inlaying. The eyes, the cheeks, and the nose all can be cut from different color of cardstock and inlaid for a beautiful result. But that takes a lot of time. And while I do enjoy inlay die cutting, I didn't do it here because I was making a ton of pets and I wanted to use a faster method, which is very simple. You just adhere a strip of colored cardstock behind the opening to have the color show through that opening. So I did yellow and black for the eyes and then pink and blush for the cheeks and black, brown or gray for the nose. I first adhered the strips and then once the glue was dry, I cut the excess cardstock away. So I made a bunch of different heads, a bunch of different bodies and a bunch of different paws. And then I just adhered the heads onto the bodies to create my little pets. You can use just the heads alone if you want a smaller die cut. I did do that for some of my cards today and you'll see that in just a bit. As for the noses on the pads, I did inlay them just because it was, uh, it was actually more difficult to add the colored cardstock from the back of the die cut because it was so small. It was a lot easier to add a dot of glue and drop a little nose piece in. 
You can also use just a pen and maybe color that element in. You also have dies to cut ears and you can cut them from different colors of cardstock to make one ear one color and the other ear another color. And then there is a die to cut a spot around the eyes to add character to your pet. And you can add one or both and have loads of fun customizing your die cut cats and dogs. Now there are two head shapes. One suits best for a dog and the other one works best for a cat. But who's to say that you can't mix and match them? You also have two ear shapes, so there's one for the dog, and I love those floppy ears, and then there's a set of triangle ears for the cat, and even the little triangle um, inserts. I added a tail to some of my die cuts. I used a little die that I think is meant to go with the antlers. I don't think it was meant to be used as a tail, but it worked well as one, so I added a tail to some of my die cuts, and I love how that makes them look. Having finished all of my pets, I started working on the grid cards. For my first grid design, this is a two by two, I die cut the four oval frames. Now those come with a pet's die set. If you're using some other die set from your stash, you can make an oval frame like this by using a scalloped oval and a regular oval together, or just look for a similar shape frame die. I die cut and glued three of these frames together to make them a little bit more dimensional. And I then adhered them onto a background using barely art glue. And I love this glue. I went with a dark blue background here. This is color Indigo from Spellbinders. And you guys know me. I love to do dark backgrounds for my cards. And in fact, I love dark walls and interior design as dark color helps everything pop. Fun fact, I recently helped my friends with a small kitchen remodel project and we painted their walls dark blue and they look so amazing with their dark gray and green kitchen. It just everything everything just pops in there. So these white frames look very contrasting against the dark background. You know, if you add them to a white background, you're going to have a totally different look. If you're trying to replicate this card, go ahead and try that. You know, like have a white background and then have a dark blue background and see how the white frames look on the white and then how they look on the blue. You'll, you'll notice the difference. It's, it's huge. Anyhow. Next, I foam mounted the pets inside the frames. So I have one pet inside each frame and I then added an object for the pet to hold. Now this die set is designed so that the pet is holding a banner that says hello or for you. And that didn't really work for my card. First, because I wanted a Christmas card and the sentiment wasn't really Christmassy. And also because I didn't want them to have or to hold for banners. So I changed things up and I made little objects for my critters to hold. I have cute little die cut gifts. These were created using the dies from the Holiday Express die set from Spellbinders. This is a cute little train die set and it has the dies to cut the gifts. So I just used the gifts portion and then I embellished the gifts with a gold die cut bow that comes from the pets set because I love the shape and the size of that bow. It looks very Christmassy to me. I used regular foam adhesive to pop the pets up and thin foam adhesive to adhere the objects the pets are holding. Now my pets are also dressed up. I have some of them wearing a Santa hat and then one of them has a deer antlers. And the, the dies to make these are also a part of the special pet delivery die set. So it's a very versatile set and you have a lot of little pieces in there to customize your die kits. Lastly, I foiled Christmas greetings in matte gold foil on the same indigo cardstock and I cut it out using a banner die to adhere in the center of the card. A variation on this 2x2 grid design would be filling one of the sections with a sentiment instead of a critter. Disregard that grid visual to the left. It is a 2x3 and this card is a 2x2. So here I foiled the sentiment in one of the grid sections. So I wanted to include a larger sentiment for this card. And instead of filling each section with a die cut, I filled one section using a sentiment. I went with black foil here and glacier cardstock background. The sentiment, because it is foiled in black, kind of looks like it is stamped. And I, I have to say, I really love this look and I think I'll be using this black foil more often. It just looks very cool. So if I were ever to rank my favorite foil colors, I would say that matte gold is my number one favorite. 
Then this black is my second favorite. And then opal foil, which is a clear foil, would be my third favorite. Anyhow, I found mounted my pets in the three other sections on the grid. And here, once again, I gave them holiday themed objects to hold. One is holding a giant ornament. One is holding a large letter. And the last one is holding a big candy cane. I also added a bunch of fashion dots in gold and I scattered them around the critters to add a little bit of movement to this card. My next two card examples feature the 3x3 three three grid. I filled the center section with a foiled sentiment. Again, I used black foil and a bigger sentiment. This one and then the previous bigger sentiment were both from the Spellbinders Parcel and Post collection. And these sentiments were originally designed to go onto the Spellbinders mailbox die. But you can see that they work really well on their own. So I foiled the sentiment in the center of my panel and then I added my critters around it. Here, I just used the heads of the critters as using them with their bodies would not have worked for my card idea. It would not have worked for this three by three grid. And I also used dies from other die sets. So I have a deer from the dancing deer and then the snowman from the dancing snowman die set. So I have a deer, a snowman, and then either a cat or a dog in each row. Oh, and by the way, my new camera is finally here. And oh my God, guys, I couldn't be happier. One of the reasons I hadn't filmed much was because of how difficult it was for me to film using my backup video camera. It was very inconvenient because I had to get up on a little ladder to see if I'm, you know, filming the correct part, if I'm actually in the frame. And it was just, it was not bringing me joy. Now that my new camera arrived, I'm so inspired to rush to my craft room and make pretty cards. That being said, this portion of the video was still filmed using the old camera, so you can see the video quality is not the best. But the beginning of this video and then the end of this video were both filmed using the new video camera. I'm still learning how to use it. It is a big camera with lots of features, but the most important thing is that I want to make cards. I want to film the process. I want to share my card making excitement with you. Uh, and now that my new camera is here, I can easily do that. Oh, and my wrist is also feeling so much better. There's no pain and I am just a happy, happy girl. So that's one way to do a three by three grid. My next and last example shows a slightly different take on the 3x3 grid design. I do fill each section with a die cut element and I fit my sentiment between the rows of the elements. I have, have a sparkling Christmas sentiment foiled in black between the first and the second row and then the sending Christmas cheer between the second and the third rows. Here, I'm not using critter dies. Instead, I wanted to show you that you can use other die cuts. So I have candy canes, envelopes, and tiny little wreaths. These are all what I like to call supportive dies from other die sets. For example, the candy cane comes from the dancing deer die set. The envelope comes from the parcel and post mailbox die set. The tiny wreath comes from the Warm Wishes Camper die set. So all of these are secondary dies from much bigger die sets. And we all have loads of die sets like this or stamp sets like this where we can find a smaller element to use in a fun and different way on a grid style card. I hope you feel inspired to create. Thank you for spending time with me today. Love you guys. And now that my new camera is here, I will see you again very, very soon.